Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the first video in a series on the channel about making my very first comic. As it stands, when I'm uploading this video, I have all of the pages thumbnailed and three pages fully sketched out. I've decided on an inking style and a coloring style, which you can see being tested on screen right now. For these little drawings, I was trying to get the hang of some of the outfits and faces that Vesper makes, as well as familiarizing myself with the proportions I had set up for her. You will see me measuring each of the sketches against her head height. I'm using a blue and red pencil to do the fundamental sketch and then the detail sketch before inking. Usually I just do one sketch for an illustration, but the point of this is to practice drawing this character and I wanted to make sure that I had the skeleton of the design down first. Some of the other videos in this series will include page thumbnails, paneling, inking, and coloring as I get to those stages. This video though is all about the prep that happens before you even start to design your panels and draw. At the beginning of this project, I just wanted to try my hand at comics. I had no giant far-reaching epic story I was compelled to tell, I just wanted to try paneling and designing a small cozy environment. I decided to try a short mini comic to practice and see if I liked the process. Of course that ended up wildly out of control and here we are. <laughs> The short mini comic story I chose turned out to be 21 pages of drama about death and magic and the forces of the universe. So it all kind of started with this little spark of loving comics and always reading comics as a kid and as a teenager and an adult, just loving comics, but always feeling a little bit like they're unattainable and my skills were inadequate to the task at hand. I'd always wanted to make one and I saw all of these wonderful comic artists on Webtoons and Instagram and even more well-known comics like the Hellboy series, but it always just kind of seemed just out of reach. I started watching a few friends work on comics during live streams and on YouTube and started to feel like maybe I, I did have enough to get started, but not sure really how to do that. For my actual story idea, my mini story, <laughs> I decided to iterate on the Frankenstein's monster plot. The character I'm drawing right now is Vesper, our mad scientist toying with the natural order. I really wanted her to embody this kind of like cute but creepy vibe. I was thinking kind of like Making Fiends, Wednesday Adams, Gravity Falls, Scooby-Doo, this kind of like kind of magical but also scientific paranormal investigations and um, kind of like a spooky vibe. We have our scientists now, we obviously need a monster and maybe a reluctant assistant. So I thought up a little friend for Vesper to bring to life and a sarcastic, underwhelmed, interdimensional assistant. There's a few more characters I kind of designed because I couldn't really stop, um, but they're not really included in the first story. When I started world building, I just kind of couldn't quit. <laughs> when it came to character designing, I spent a lot of time doodling ideas for the characters and writing down lots of little bits. I watched the Scott Flanders Proko character development videos, and I've kind of linked those for you below because they're amazing, and used his process for listing out all the references and kit bashing your doodles to build final character designs that are more consistent and have like more of a theme to them. At this point, I started working on model sheets for my characters to make sure everything stayed super consistent throughout the comic and we had a front, side, and three quarter view at least for each character. I made sure after watching so many videos about making comics and character design for comics that the design for these characters was super simple. Um, a few of these ones that I'm drawing right now have a little bit more detail to the costuming just because I knew these were going to be illustrations and they're not specifically like the actual outfits. I wanted to make sure everything that I was making for these characters was repeatable in a way that I could kind of duplicate the same costume and the same vibe for each character through the whole comic and maybe even to more comic stories because I kind of fell in love with these characters and this whole little world and just started making more and more and more lore for them. When it came to world building, I had a lot of ideas from working on just the story and the characters and ended up with a ton of extra information about the world that helped things be more immersive. While we're world building, it's important to keep in mind where are we and when are we? What time are we in? For this comic, the setting is Earth, but maybe an alternate uh, Earth where alchemy, magic, and interdimensional creatures exist. 
so that we can have our interdimensional cat assistant. And then also it's kind of like a haunted house. So paranormal and, and things like ghosts and cryptids and stuff like that exist as well. What time are we in? It's probably similar to now, but uh, the haunted house itself is Victorian and kind of ramshackle. What locations do we have in the story? Mostly this, this portion of my story is gonna be told inside just the haunted house. Um, in a couple of different rooms, we'll probably see some of the yard in the establishing shots and out the windows. I did end up building outside of what I would need to use for just the story because I kind of fell in love with the characters and the little spooky world I was making. I think it's actually really good for the storytelling because you need the world to be fleshed out in your own head before you can communicate those things to your audience. One of the hardest things for me to picture without actually sitting down and drawing it out was architecture. So here I would recommend maybe building a 3D model if you are, if you have the skills for 3D modeling. I am a little bit out of practice with Blender right now. It's been over a year since I used it last and I'm not about to be trying to teach myself how to use that at the moment. So I feel like at some point I'll probably make a 3D model of my haunted house if only to get the idea out of my brain, but it hasn't happened yet. I ended up making blueprint styled drawings of each floor of the house, but it would have been really nice to have a 3D model when it came to starting the thumbnails and the sketching. It would have been a lot faster to be able to set up a 3D camera and take a screenshot to trace over. After all of that doodling and thinking, it was finally time to sit down and write the comic script. I'm not gonna lie, this tripped me up really bad. I was stuck on the script for a few weeks. It was super frustrating, but I did end up working through it. And here's kind of the basic process that I used to do that. Step one, write out the story beats. An example of this would be, character wakes up, character has breakfast, character heads to the bus stop. Bus driver sees character and leaves anyway. Character uses magic to catch the bus. Bus driver is angry, but too scared to say anything. Character makes it to school on time. We have all of the beats of the story and they're kind of broken up into not really acts, but into kind of scenes. Step two is write it out like a screenplay. Include location, any shots that you know you want, dialogue and actions. An example of that would be establishing shot, sun just coming up, fall morning, messy bedroom. We see the character sleeping, alarm goes off, quotations, alarm sound effect. Character yawns and sits up, quotation, alarm sound effect continues. Character levitates the alarm into the air and out the window with a crash, crash sound effect. Step three, break the script up into pages one at a time. I used tiers within the pages to sort out where, where the panels were that I wanted. I originally tried to thumbnail just from that, that step two script and the mental gymnastics were too much to try to plan it all out while I was also drawing. So I came back to the script after watching Becca Hilburn's comic thumbnailing video linked below and broke things down smaller. This helped me be able to thumbnail a lot faster and more effectively. I ended up doing what Becca recommends, separate the pages with a space at the bottom so you can thumbnail right there on the same page. I loved how this method kept me focused on the page I was working on and the script pieces with the thumbnail when you come back to it, uh, when you start to sketch, it brings you up to speed really quickly. An example of this would be page one, tier one, Big half page establishing shot of messy room with fall morning lighting, sleeping character in bed. Tier two, zoom on character's snoring face, shot of nightstand with quiet alarm clock one minute before it goes off, little dust motes in the air to show a little atmosphere. So this kind of lets us page by page break out kind of the rows that we want to panel in. And that, that works a lot better for me than trying to go straight from like a screenplay to a comic <laughs> just because you can't really translate like I want the panel to say this here's what the dialogue says here's what the shot looks like and also like here's what it is on the page while you're trying to thumbnail which is supposed to be where we're trying to figure out where the dialogue boxes go and how much space is in the panel and how we're moving from panel to panel it's also good to keep in mind at this point thumbnailing doesn't have to be super detailed you're gonna be doing another sketch on top of this so the thumbnailing is just to place the character and the dialogue boxes and any really important background stuff that you need, like in establishing shots. 
So you don't really need to like work out every single tiny minute detail on your thumbnail pass. You come back to it after you're done thumbnailing all of the pages to more of a sketching each panel individually step that uh, kind of bridges between the thumbnailing and the inking the same way that that page by page breakup bridges between the script and the thumbnailing. I think I'm gonna go ahead and make just a whole video about just thumbnailing the comic because that was really rough for me to get going and I definitely had to get some help from other people, other artists and other comic artists to make sure that I was getting things correct. And I also had to come back and repanel a lot of my pages because I had really messed it up. I feel like my first go around for the setup was really rocky and I'm excited to next time be able to go through this a little bit smoother and maybe with a plan in place. I think that's it for the setup video. Go ahead and keep an eye out for the thumbnailing, inking, and coloring videos if you're interested in those. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. This video and all of my other projects brought to you by my wonderful patrons, Terror Billy Jean, Anthony Jutz, and Jesse C. Thank you guys so much for your support.